Hello and welcome to how to build a dam in Dig or Die. Now the reasons you'd want to build a dam are to generate power, because the only other way to generate power is through solar panels, and well, you probably can guess solar panels only work when the sun's shining, so they do not offer a 24-hour solution to your power generation needs. The two uses per power that are actually useful are teleporters, which will take you from the one end of the map to the other instantaneously, and the sun lamps, which provide enough light that plants will grow under them on this dirt below here. Well, if I had these lights on, the ferns and flowers and trees would grow. But for now, we will just be looking at the actual generating power, not using it. So this is the block that makes the magic happen. It uses water flowing through it to generate power. So one thing I will show over here is that there is plenty of water and that there is a, pow a generator in between the two doing a fat lot of nothing. And that is because while there is water there, there is no difference in pressure on either side of the block. So I will put a little door here, and you can, this is a, by the way, this door is a very easy way to have um, floodgate control without actually having to put down or break blocks. Just open close. Um, so as you can tell, there is no difference in pressure on either side. It's the exact same level. But if I take out this block and let all the water drain away, you'll quickly notice that there's a big pr pressure difference. There's a lot of water on one side and none on the other. So if I open up this floodgate, you'll see that the power generates for a little bit before they start equalizing like they, they would in real life. So I'll close this again and move on to the next part. Water pressure is uh, dictated not by the amount of water, like you see there's a lot of water here in terms of square footage or square meterage, depending on your system of measurement, but actually the only really is dependent on the column of water above it. So you see the generator here, it has one, two, three blocks of water above it, and that's going to mean it only has enough pressure to, well, not generate any power. As, as you can see, I'm opening this up and there's a lot of water flowing through it, but there's not enough pressure of water to push any, to make any power through this generator. So the way to actually generate power is to have a a tall enough body of water that generates enough pressure to actually push the generator into making power. So over here, I'll turn the generator on, and you can see that this column of water is making enough power to power up four of these things, and as you notice, it slowly drains away, and as it drains further and further, it'll generate less and less power. All right now it's at three, the minimum needed to power a teleporter, and the second it'll come trip dip to two, and so at 10, about 10 meters tall, it produces barely and not really enough to produce, do anything. And then with only about six meters of water, it will only generate one. And by the time it reaches five, it does not produce any power for you. So I built a little demonstration down here to actually highlight this more in depth. So three here, no power. Five, well, still no power. But now we have seven, and we get a little pip here, and it produces, turns on one light before it drains too quickly. Turn on this, and again, only two pips of water at nine. And we have eleven here, which I will turn on the other side so you can see the top. And it produces enough for three, but it quickly drains away, and only two, and then down to one. And down here is the tallest one I don't have here. And it produces a full 5 for a second before it drains away to 4. So this is almost exactly 15 meters tall. And will produce enough power to generate... will have enough pressure to generate 5 power for a brief moment before it drains away. So, on to actually building a generator. Which I will cut to. So here I have a little... A uh, pond I kind of made using some walls, and there's a little fish in there. I'll call him Troy for some reason. Um, and if you can tell, it really doesn't have much uh, volume in it. So one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's only about 40 square meters of water, 
and it's just not that big. And I can turn on and let the water out, but you probably could guess that it won't produce any power since it doesn't have any reasonable amount of pressure on it since the height is very, very short. And the other big factor is that it's only 8 meters wide, and all the other water just flows away. It does not actually collect much water other than what's right here. So if I open this door here, it quickly drains away, but there won't be, there won't ever really be enough rain to actually keep it constant without having it drain away before any more, uh, yeah, have it drain away. So it's very ineffective as far as an actual dam goes. So over here, I built a slightly larger one. And if you can tell, it's actually quite deep. It's very much deep enough to produce a full amount of water. And the other thing is, is that it has a uh, watershed that's going from over here, where the crashed ship is, all the way to over here, where the top of this hill is. The water here will flow to my right, and the water to my left will flow to my left. Which kind of makes sense. And so all this water that flows over here will then drain into this pond. Um, so I could go turn on... Oh god. Um, I could go turn on or turn open the floodgates and let water out and it would produce me power and that'd be very helpful but the thing probably you probably are seeing is that water is leaking out of here and that's because dirt does not hold water well actually dirt does hold water and actually lets it flow through so if I uh, oops I ran out where is my there it is I need to make some more pro tip if you want to make a lot of one resource just click and hold and it will make a bunch of it. So uh, it saves me a lot of finger strain. And I will then put down some locks here. So yeah, it's leaking away water before I even am able to get it. So that is one thing you need to be conscious of when you're having your water shift. So now not none of the water will actually see through it and instead just flow into my reservoir as that quickly fills up. It doesn't take that much uh, rain uh, area or that much area to actually be able to power a generator or two. But so I'm going to open up and it produces a full five pips of power. That's really nice. But it also is draining this away. But I am. Yeah, it will drain this away slowly enough that by the time the next rain comes, it will fill it back up. So. This would be a pretty effective uh, dam to generate power with. So, before I end the video, I was wanting to mention I was sitting here for a little while, and the dam is slowly draining, as you can easily tell, but the rains are common enough that it actually fills up the dam a pretty good bit uh, before it stops raining and then it can drain some more. So it'll have a natural fluctuation, but the key is to have it deep enough that it will constantly be at the 5 power to maximum that it can, just so you're utilizing your resources most effectively. And this gun is a heck of a lot of fun, by the way. So I hope this was helpful and informative. If you have comments, questions, concerns, please let me know in the comments and I will try to get back to them as best as I can. Thanks for watching.